Hi guys, Dr. Lavin. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about hypersensitivity. Now I use this term quite a lot in my patients, mainly because of this umbrella term being associated with lots of conditions that we deal with daily, and especially with our current pandemic and the stress associated with it, I find a lot of the conditions have flared up more. So what do I mean by hypersensitivity? Well, it's the idea of the release of chemicals and hormones in our body that are stimulated to such a high level that conditions that are normally very well managed are actually flared up. The main culprit in this is things like cortisol. So this is a hormone that's released in our fight or flight response. Now cortisol is important. We all need it to function. And as you can imagine, if you want to say, think on the spot, when someone is questioning you or you want to run away from something, we definitely, definitely need cortisol. And that's fine in the short term and very, very important. But it's the long term impact and the inflammation it produces when you have days and days of raised levels that worries us more. It can worry us so much that some of these exacerbations in some of the conditions we talk about is not ideal. So skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis, which can be flared up due to stress responses, they can actually have long-term implications on damage to our skin. But more concerning is its internal effect. We don't realize or appreciate how damaging the cortisol can be if released at high levels and maintained for a long period of time. And sadly, things like heart attacks and strokes have been linked mainly because of the fact that those levels are so high that it puts further pressure on these organs. Now, with hypersensitivity, we find it not only affects things like the skin, the body internally, but even other areas that we wouldn't normally think of so often. So we talk about the, the gut hormones or the way our bodies manage these. So gut intolerances, things like milk intolerance, which you would have normally been able to manage fine, all of a sudden tend to deteriorate. And it's not specifically you're drinking more milk, but it's the fact the way our body's coping is poor. And that's mainly because of this idea of hypersensitivity. Now, how can we reduce this hypersensitivity or what things can we do? especially with, what, with what's going on at the moment, there's no real way of, of controlling or stopping that. We know COVID-19 is there, but it's our way of managing it or addressing the concerns associated with it. We're finding a lot at the moment with mental health shooting through the roofs. Some of our consultation rates now, we have probably three in five consultations now actually having mental health associated problems. And that's a big problem because it shows that we're not managing this as well as we should. So how can we reduce hypersensitivity? Well, there are various methods. I mean, we can talk about things like the diet, the exercise, but what about psychological therapies? Now, psychological therapies, things like CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy, things like counseling, and a new concept I'm reading about now, tapping therapy. These are all wonderful in ways where we can possibly adapt them into our daily living maybe using once a week or every few days. So when things do get a little bit difficult, we can apply this so that we can manage conditions better. So the idea of psychological therapies really is to appreciate that the problem may still always be there. We may not be able to remove that. An example is things like COVID-19. At this current stage, as much as we're vaccinating as many people as we can, it's still something that is there in front of us. But how can we manage our mental health or how can we manage that condition better? And the, the a great analogy that I've read about with this tapping therapy is the idea that say you have a piece of wood and you're stroking that piece of wood. Now, as we stroke it, there's a higher risk of picking up splinters and that obviously cause pain and bleeding. So we are aware of that. And especially in things like hypersensitivity, that awareness will be much higher because those hormone levels are very high and they're picking up those sensations. Now think about having some form of therapy um, where we can actually follow this up where we're stroking the wood after therapy and being aware that the wood is there but actually not feeling that pain or sensation from those splinters as much. I have seen this a lot in some of my patients who've sadly gone through very difficult issues, things like domestic violence or child abuse for example, where they've managed it very, very well but they are acutely sensitive. They're aware about it. They have great insight into it, where they know their way they approach things is probably a little bit more aggressive or at a much higher level than they would like. And after therapy, they find things that used to bother them, even certain noises, um, can actually be much reduced and they're actually finding they're managing things better. In terms of other things that we can do, things like diet, 
So simple things, things like broccoli, for example, or blueberries, which contain flavonoids, and these actually can reduce um, inflammation in the body. Things like chamomile tea, which many of you may drink before bed and time, for example. There is research to suggest that these can, can actually calm or reduce this sensitivity. Exercise, we all know that releasing these endorphins are improving our serotonin levels, can have great impact in reducing this hypersensitivity as well. So it's really about trying to find something that suits you, that you can manage very, very well. I've recently learned about this tapping therapy and actually had a session last week and, and really found that that technique was actually a very useful one that we can adapt maybe in my normal day uh, and whenever areas or times get quite stressful we can use that. I, start, I try to start my day in a very basic way so things like meditation for example so trying to do that maybe about five minutes or so do your usual brush your teeth go to the bathroom have your shower but actually dedicating some time about five minutes or so to focus the mind so things like a burning flame for example focusing that for five minutes can really really have an impact for the rest of your day i've also tried to adapt or apply breathing techniques so these this is the idea of having 10 deep breaths for example if you think about your normal day how often would you actually take 10 full deep breaths in your day probably very unlikely that you would do it at all, but it is really important to follow these techniques. And there are these wonderful doctors, people like Dr. Chatterjee, who follow these ideas of having a breath where you hold in, take a deep breath and out, but you, hold, you take the deep breath for about three seconds, hold it for about four seconds, and then expel for about five seconds. And doing that about 10 times in the morning, maybe after something like meditation, can be really helpful to start your day. Finishing off your day with some form of exercise if you don't manage in the day. I've tried to adapt that since the new year, about 30 minutes every day, and that can be really, really helpful. Even things like HIIT training, although I wouldn't advise that to do just before bed, I would advise to try and fit that in in some day because it's short burst where you can hit your 30 minutes of exercise and you can really hit those calories as well as the, the positive benefits on the body. Now doing simple things like that with the diet, with the exercise, with the psychological therapies, can all reduce this hypersensitivity level. And it does mean when we are faced with more challenging situations, either at work or family or financial, a way of managing it can be a lot, lot better. We'll go into more videos about the more specifics of it, but today was more of a general idea and the general concept of hypersensitivity and its impact on diseases that we have in our body, as well as the way we manage things. Thank you for listening. Take care of yourselves.